Gluttony takes the food and places it reverently on the table. The multiple boxes look like enough to feed a small family. Ganny and Gluttony are visibly excited about the food. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sensations. Last time, Grant sort of cornered us in a dark alley and told us we better watch out, so we better break up with Gluttony or else there'll be consequences. Um, I think we've already suffered one of the consequences um, on account of the car incident, but um, yeah, Kosuke is going to tell Gluttony how uh, Grant's a racist piece of garbage, so let's go. So... Hmm? I ran into Grant on my way to get food. Oh yeah? Uh, how's he doing? A weird coincidence, he doesn't live around here. He, uh... He's not happy we're dating. What? <laughs> yeah, he called me a few names. Said if I continued dating you, there would be consequences. Are you being serious right now? Completely. I'm going to call him right now. That's completely unacceptable. I don't know if you should. And not stand up for you? Absolutely I should. There's nothing going on with me and Grant. Him acting this way is completely out of line. Okay. Gluttony dials Grant. Grant doesn't pick up, so Gluttony leaves him a voicemail. Hey Grant, it's John. Kosuke told me that you threatened him about dating me. I wanted to let you know, we never were, and never are, going to be together. Huh. You aren't welcome on the swim team anymore after this. This is childish stuff from you. I really expected better. If I see you around, we can be cordial, but you will not threaten Kosuke again. I hope this message leaves you with no doubt where we stand. Later. You're hot when you're angry. <laughs> I'm not angry often. I know. I'm just trying to lighten things up. Well, that's that. Now we can enjoy our breakfast in peace. Gluttony tears into his food with single-minded determination. I love that he doesn't let problems bother him for long. He deals with whatever, then forgets about it. Such an admirable quality. I eat a little and relax. Gluttony dealt with Grant, but I can't tell if I've seen the last of him. Gluttony goes to the gym a lot. I imagine Grant will continue to go there. Awkward. Ganny was a little less energetic about being outside today. Oh, poor guy. This heat must be awful for a dog. That's why I normally take him out earlier. Sorry, Ganny. I'll try not to keep him occupied so late next time. But I still think I'm gonna get stabbed, guys. Or gluttony. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Oh, I didn't mean anything by that. I mean, I really enjoyed our time last night. I... Gluttony's Oops. uncertainty is cute. What a guy. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Did you see me just... Um, jolt? I think I... I thought I saw a spider on my keyboard. <laughs> uh. Oh, I'm more than enjoying it. Whew, that's good. It's a weird thing for me to talk about. My one serious past relationship. He thought my, uh, you know, was way too big. Kind of a downer. I'm glad it's not a problem for you. A guy complaining about being too large? Uh, you hear something new every day. I know, look at Kosuke's face. <laughs> Same as mine. Um, really though, it's, you know, it, it actually is a real problem. Some, um, my boyfriend um, has complained about it. <laughs> no, you're completely fine. Don't worry about stuff like that. I won't now that you said not to. Cool, so what are your plans for this evening? Well, honestly, I wasn't sure. I didn't have plans, at least not yet. Sundays are usually chill for me. I didn't do much except play with Ganny. Maybe we could, uh... Fuck some more? I'm totally down. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it like that, but yeah. I'm already on my way to your bed. <laughs> I'm on my way. I spent a good amount of time with Gluttony. The following days were a blur of happiness, sex, and food. Gluttony was a very thoughtful, determined guy. Now that we were together, it seemed like we'd never be apart. 
We fell into a routine, purely by accident. We'd go work out, we'd take Ganny on jogs, we'd have sex and eat crazy amounts of food. That seemed to be all Gluttony wanted, and it wasn't a bad life. I woke up super late one day, exhausted from our recent excursions. Hey, Kosuke, I'm gonna take Ganny out for a run, but I ordered us Chinese. I left my credit card on the counter, just use that when they deliver. I'll be back soon. Gluttony gave me a quick kiss on my forehead before heading out with Ganny. I got out of bed slowly. All this sex and working out has kept me in a perpetual state of soreness. Not that it's a bad thing. I have some muscle definition now. Not even close to Gluttony's though. I roll out of Gluttony's bed. I should make myself useful somehow. Gluttony's energy never quits. I'll, uh, clean the kitchen or something. I see Ganny's food bowl has spilled dog food around it, so I find a broom and dustpan in the kitchen pantry and start sweeping the floor. A short time passes, and I hear a sharp rap on the door. It must be the Chinese food. I grab the card Gluttony left and go to answer the door. Um, yeah, let's look through the people, actually. An overwhelming sense of dread fills me. Why? I decide to trust my instincts and check the peephole. I don't see anything. Someone is covering the hole. I wonder. <laughs> Whoever is outside suddenly and aggressively grabs the doorknob and twists it violently. Fortunately, Gluttony didn't forget to lock it. I back away instinctively as a muffled curse sounds through the door. I wait a moment. Has he left? I reach towards the phone, intending to call 911. There's a loud smash as a booted foot smashes into the door. Once. Twice. Oh god. I pick up the phone and hastily dial 911 as the door lock splinters and caves in. The burglar, with a few more kicks, strides quickly into the apartment and grabs the phone out of my hands. He flings it away and stares at me with seething rage. Oh my god! Kosuke. John always did have a soft spot for losers. Did you spit on my face? Grant? I don't understand. What? Grant slaps me across the face, stunning me. <laughs> Shut up, whore. Oh. Things will be a lot less pleasant for you. Put your wrists together. Why would I listen to you? No. John's going to be back at any moment, and... Grant punches my stomach hard. The air rushes out of my lungs, and I open my mouth, struggling to breathe. Grant takes advantage of my crippled state and begins tying my hands behind my back. I try to struggle, but Grant is a workout addict like gluttony. He's monstrously strong. Effortlessly, he finishes tying the knots and hoists me over his shoulder. I faintly hear footsteps coming up the stairs to Gluttony's apartment, and to my great relief, Gluttony and Ganny walk back in. <laughs> what? What is going on here? What happened to the door? Grant? What about me who slung over his shoulder, apparently? You idiot. You should have stayed out with your stupid dog. Grant? What are you doing? Put Kosuke down. No, I'm leaving with him. I am <laughs> sick of people getting things they don't deserve. And this frail bag of bones never deserved you. You need to reevaluate your life, John. That's ironic coming from you, considering the circumstances. <laughs> he has a gun. <laughs> you think I intended to come out of this alive? Hardly. I made my plans after your last fucking rejection. Seeing you with this scrawny piece of shit. God. It was the tipping point in a long series of depressing life events. Grant, I'm... Sorry that things didn't work out. You aren't sorry! You had your chance. Kosuke's death is just a byproduct of this unfair world. God, he's so emo. Death? Grant, put Kosuke down. We... we can get you help. <laughs> you really are a waste of good looks, John. Eh. Step aside, and hold on to your dog. I'm leaving now, with Kosuke. Faintly, I hear hurried footsteps outside Gluttony's apartment. Footsteps climbing the staircase. I thought we never finished calling 911. Police! Freeze! Everybody down! Two police officers with flashlights and guns burst into the apartment. I figured it might come to this. In a smooth, unhurried motion, Grant takes aim at Gluttony. <laughs> Goodbye, John. 
The next minute is a blur. I see Ganny rush Grant, and a hasty shot impact him. Grant drops me and takes aim at Gluttony again, before being shot two, three, four times himself. He squeezes off a shot as he dies, impacting Gluttony somewhere in his chest. Police scream, sirens wail in the background. I faint from the stress and shock of seeing Gluttony fall. I woke up a minute or two later, to a medic inspecting me for damage. Outside of the soreness from being dropped, I'm fine. I glance around desperately, asking about John, about Ganny. They're nowhere to be seen. A cop assures me they're being transported to the hospital. I spend a few hours answering questions by cops and being monitored by a paramedic before I'm released. I head straight for the hospital, hoping with everything in me that Gluttony and Ganny are okay. The classic murder, racist murder, suicide. Uh, I'm almost sad he didn't get away with it, but he wasn't successful, because you know he wasn't. <laughs> I walk quickly to the information desk in the hospital Gluttony and Ganny had been taken to. I thought it was a little uncommon for an animal to be treated in a human hospital. What? <laughs> he is? Okay, that's... yeah. They must have made an exception. Maybe gunshot wounds are common in Vegas. After I figure out where Gluttony's room is, I head in that direction carrying some roses for Gluttony, and a bag of dog treats for Ganny. I found them in room 322, Ganny lying on a bed across from Gluttony, both of them sleeping. I don't blame them. I put the vase of roses on the bedside table, and accidentally wake Gluttony up. Hey. Look at your European-style outlets. Like what? Are those not European-style outlets? On the wall? I don't know. Do, do hospitals have international outlets? Why would they? That seems strange. Do they? Hey, sorry for waking you. It's all good. I've been sleeping more than I usually do anyway. I'm glad you're both alright. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Barely have any bandages. A long oh, you got shot passes. like five times. Gluttony looks at Ganny and smiles. John, I have something to tell you. Uh, I knew this would be coming. Not that I blame you. What is he gonna? What do you think he's gonna say? Well, um, it's just. Um, I guess we should be honest. Oh, oh, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Hey. We're both deadly sins. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can be myself without prospective dates being horrified at how much I eat. Oh, that is a benefit. So, was I your test? Did Lucifer want you to seduce me or something? That crazy old snake does love his shenanigans. Kind of. Lucifer wanted me to seduce all seven sins, actually. Within two months. Wow, that's kind of harsh. So you have to leave and go seduce the others? What about us? Well, if you'll wait, once I accomplish Lucifer's test, I can begin my new life. And choose a partner to actually be with. Oh, that sounds good to me. I'm very patient. Wait, did I choose the wrong cho Oh, I think I should have chose the first choice. Oops. I know. I really appreciated our time together. It's been both exciting and exhausting. But I've really enjoyed being with you. <laughs> My life normally doesn't have crazy obsessed people shooting me, I promise. I'm sure it doesn't. I'll be back once I've cleared up the rest of Lucifer's test. I hope you and Ganny heal well. I'll check on you in a few weeks. I won't. I might respond to your text message if you send me one. You know, it's like, I'm not gonna check up. Thanks, Kosuke. I'll look forward to seeing you again. You know where to find me. I walk by Ganny's bed as I exit, and give him a few scratches behind his ear. He wakes up briefly and yawns, then goes back to sleep. I smile and head out of their room, closing the door behind me. Well, that was like the least confrontational ending so far. Um... Wait, what's all this? Should I read all- no, this is like, previously. Some previous text messages. Okay, yeah. Alexander... Alexander told me things had ended with gluttony. What the... Uh, 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 
he's keeping tabs on me. Oh my god, he's gonna know. He is going to know exactly when I seduce the last sin. And then if I don't go back to him, he's gonna kill me. Oh my god. What do I do? What do I do? I don't want to be with him. You're keeping tabs on me? Hey, it's in my nature to covet what I can't have. Speaking of, I want to have you tonight, while deciding who to go for next. What? He wants to haul me over for a booty call? I've kind of had a bad couple of days. All the more reason to let me spoil you. I'll send Alexander to pick you up at once. I don't know. Just for the night, then you'll be off. Promise. We should just do what he says. Um, he's gonna throw us out of a building again. How can I say no to such a handsome guy? Fuck, I'm getting hard just texting with you. I'm Sydney Alexander. Send me your location. Oh god, he's so obsessed. I can't. What's the ellipses? Oh. Well, I guess... What's up with that? So we're not doing that? I'm confused. I thought it would be like some kind of special event where we would, um... Go ahead and... I don't know, go have sex with him? I don't know. But then nothing happened. Weird. Very strange. Um, anyway. Now we have our choice between pride and wrath. Hmm. Luke Gallo Performer. Luke was born into wealth. It was not long into his teenage years that he was selling out concerts. He's fabulously wealthy and derives a lot of meaning out of his image, whether real or fake. Luke has re received international acclaim for his charity work for children's hospitals, and utilizes this to heighten his already worshipped persona. Luke loves being the center of attention and shows this through his gaudy outlandish outfits. Can his cocky demeanor and gushing flamboyance be conquered to find the unsure caring person beneath? Swedish, 21 years, fairly experienced. Alright, and he's 6'4", apparently. I think this is our mark. I decide to go after Pride. He's a tall, lavishly dressed guy. Dressed in a manner sort of similar to a peacock. Fitting. My watch is directing me towards a large open-air convention center and performance stage. It says his name is Luke Gallo. He's a pop star, and currently number one on America's Top 40 with this hit single, Superboy. <laughs> which is going to make things challenging. Oh god. Pop stars don't exactly hang out one-on-one -on -one with their fans. Especially the super popular ones. But uh, Kosuke said Superboy so disgustedly, like, uh... Like he's, uh... Like he... Like this guy is Justin Bieber and he hates Justin Bieber or something, you know? I start walking down the street towards the direction my watch is pointing. A few people jostle me rudely as they walk by. I should keep my eyes up, instead of on my watch. Oh, excuse me, Sonny. Uh, didn't mean to bump into you too hard there, you know? Weird. As I near the stadium, I notice there's a good amount of flyers posted, advertising Pride's event. It's a charity event starting in a half hour. A charity event for children's hospitals. That's a pretty good sign. Pride has a heart. Now let's, let's rewind a bit. Judas? Judas? <laughs> I want to talk to Judas. Okay, search telephone to find info about Pride. I guess. I decide to look up the event and see if I can find anything interesting about Pride. Hmm. Is he gonna read this? Because last time I read something, and it feels too long for him to read. Luke Gallo's torrid love life. Luke Gallo's many things. Pop star and fashion icon being his most notable. But what about being a boyfriend? The gossip circles within Hollywood says Luke is dating billionaire tech tycoon Randy Hartford. We had the opportunity to ask Luke about this potential budding romance, where we were told... I don't even know what voice to give him. That is not true. 
Randy was a one-night stand, and he wasn't even that good. I didn't even invite him to any more after parties. Well, well that's kind of a way to do him dirty. Uh, what? You're just... I mean, did he do something awful to you? That you're just publicly saying that he sucks at sex? Like, what? <laughs> When we asked him if he was dating anyone at the moment, Luke laughed and responded, Please, who could handle all of this? So it seems that for now, superstar Luke Gallo is single. But if a billionaire can't keep him interested, who can? Luke Gallo has an upcoming performance in Vegas to help raise money for children's hospitals. The Vegas Times. Oh, another one? Superboy stays number one for eight weeks in a row. Singer Luke Gallo has now maintained his dominance of the music charts for eight weeks in, the, in a row with this year's hit single, Superboy. No other artist is coming close to dethroning this catchy tune about a guy who does it all. Superboy, live at the convention center, July 15th. With Luke Gallo at the tail end of a whirlwind of tour across America concluding in his home, state of Nevada, one could certainly believe that Superboy is about Luke Gallo himself. No, Superboy is a message of confidence to my fans, says Luke. It's about one person trying to do so much in the world and finding the drive and energy to accomplish what they set out to do. It could be anyone. A modest description from Luke, but with Luke hosting so many concerts and so many charity drives, one can't help but draw comparisons. Luke's final concert for the year is in Vegas, and seating is selling out fast. Music of Vegas, Torp. Torp? I arrive at the What's convention forth? center. The line to get in is already several hundred people deep. I don't have tickets or anything. How am I supposed to get in? And then into Pride's pants with no tickets. I shrug to myself and get in line. Maybe they have some tickets left. Maybe I can figure something else out while I wait. I like how he says that even though we barely have any money. My thoughts are jarred suddenly, as Pride appears on the large television mounted to the outside of the performing arena. Hello, Las Vegas! Hello, my gorgeous fans. It's only 30, oops, 29 minutes until we're together at last. If you haven't bought tickets yet, standing room tickets are still available. I'd love to see you there. And so would all the children who are struggling so bravely every day fighting their illness. With your help, a percentage of each ticket sale is being donated to St. Michael's Children's Hospital here in your very own hometown. I know you'll love the show, and I know the children will love you for attending. See you soon. Manipulative. Well, they have tickets left. That's good. I guess I'll just buy one, get inside, and see where that takes me. I muse about what I should do as I'm ushered through the line. The attendant scanning tickets takes mine and ushers me over to another attendant. This way, sir. The viewing box is this way. Luke will be coming through shortly to say hello then going on stage. Do not touch or approach Luke unless requested or permission is granted. Refreshments are served three times during the show. Please tip your server. Got it. Wait, we're getting a viewing box? Uh, how were we affording this? We walk to the viewing box and inside is a handful of people, mostly fans and Luke himself, flanked by security and taking selfies with his fawning fans. I walk over to Luke, and his face lights up like he's seen an old friend. How did we get in here? I'm confused. Did we skip a step? How did we get to the view viewing box where Luke was hanging out before, just bef where Luke is going to be hanging out just before the show? I'm so confused. Hey, you're just arriving, and I'm just leaving. Isn't that so unfair? Oh my God! Before I go, <laughs> can we take a picture? There's no shortage of hot guys out there, but hmm. I'd have to say you're a rare one. Jesus Christ, look at him. It's like he barely fits on the screen. <laughs> uh, it's like he has to like hunch over to fit, fit on the screen like he's bending over at me. I, uh, sure. That would be great. Pride sidles up to me and wraps his long arm around my shoulder. It feels fake and false, but the surrounding people look really jealous. What's your name, handsome? I'm Kosuke. What's yours? <laughs> oh la la, what a sense of humor! I'm Luke. It's a pleasure to meet you. Smile for the camera. Thanks. Uh, hey, before you go... 
Yes? Anything for such a good-looking fan. Um, anything then. I'd love to have a date with you tonight. I can't think of... I can think of a lot we can do after the show. Hmm, what do you think he'd like better? I have no idea. I don't know him yet. Um... I think B. That's a little more suggestive. Um... I think I like it better. <laughs> I don't think oh, it was that I could good. I too, with such a stallion like yourself. Unfortunately, I do not know if I have the time. The time! Uh, but anyway, I think choice A would have been better. Use less attraction power? So what? Yes. I decide to use my power to salvage the situation. Lust powers go. <laughs> After a long moment, Pride laughs. Oh god, he's strong. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, I have such a weakness for handsome men. You've got a date. You and me, backstage after the show. We'll figure out things from there. <laughs> Carlos, make it happen. Of course. Pride flounces out of the room and winks at me before licking his lips. Despite the obvious anger and jealousy from the surrounding fans, I feel a little tightening in my pants. Oh dear. Pride's show starts barely ten minutes after he left. He appears on his stage dramatically and starts talking to the audience. Pride mentions the children benefiting from the concert tonight, and a few people in the viewing box start crying. They're totally wrapped up in Pride's persona. Hmm. After a moment of talking, Pride launches into his biggest song. He looks good. All of his steps and movements are practiced and seem effortless. <laughs> yeah, get the boys on stage. Mm. Hell yeah, I'm adding this to my Spotify. Mm. <laughs> uh. Oh my god. Oh. Pride effortlessly flows into a few more songs. Didn't skip the Pride song the interlude. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> well, well, well. I promised we'd have a good time tonight. And I know from all your smiles that you are. But this is the best part of the night. We have the director of the Las Vegas Children's Hospital here to accept the check from tonight's show. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Vamora! And my wonderful manager Joshua is here to present it. Hey, handsome. What's the total amount we collected for the children tonight? I am pleased to announce that we have collected a grand total of... The anticipation is killing me! One hundred and forty-five thousand dollars! Wow. Yay! That might pay for one child's medical fees in America. We all did wow. it. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I can't say how much that will mean to the hospital. In fact, I left out one tiny detail. I'm going to match that donation and... I'm going to round up. We're donating $300,000 tonight to change children's lives. May hey, two people, two little kids maybe will live now. Let's give a huge round of applause for Mr. Vimora and my lovely manager. Uh, now, I promised a little something else. Something a little more personal about me. You can all imagine how hard it is to find love being in the spotlight. Everyone knows you and watches your every move. It's a little much for most people. Well, I'm happy to announce, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this, that I'm engaged! Why are we going on a date? <laughs> I'm totally, oh my God, no. totally kidding. Can you imagine me married, 
<laughs> no. Well, I miss the audience's ooh. But I do want to introduce you to my boyfriend, Kosuke. Someone else pronouncing it Kosuke. <laughs> but um, how is he just introducing me? He doesn't even know me. I know I left Kosuke somewhere. Would my manager be a dear and bring him down to the front? It's not Kosuke. Pride announces us as a couple, and several people glare at me. Pride's manager bursts into the viewing box a couple minutes later, out of breath. Oh dear. Come on, Luke needs you on stage. Um, but that is where I think I'll end this episode for today, right before we go ahead and get on stage, but I thank you all for watching. Um, the situation with Gluttony sort of resolved itself a lot faster than I thought it would. It was kind of weird. We just went to the hospital and suddenly he was just like, yeah, okay, I get it. You're, you're a sin. Okay, cool. Um, sorry about all this. Okay, well, we, we'll see each other again, I hope. And it was then like, bye. It was really fast, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank all my patients that support me at the Aiden tier or above, and their names are Blue Lagoon, Hooray is My Way, Jesse Olson, and NQS. So thank you guys, and I'd like to thank all of my patrons for supporting me on Patreon and making it possible for me to play games like this on my channel. And when we come back in the next episode, I guess we're gonna get on stage and receive the ire of a lot of fans. Potentially more death threats. I feel like death threats might be common in this game. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> see you next time, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>